السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين All praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His household, his companions We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless them all And to bless every single one of us My beloved brothers and sisters If we take a look at this beautiful month of Ramadan it is already coming to an end. We will notice that so much of it has gone by. This is because time does not wait for anyone. If we are not going to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do we expect that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends upon us? He has given us a month of mercy, a month of change. It's our duty to call on that mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by changing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This evening, inshallah, we will be looking at Surah An-Naml. And that is the surah named after the ant. And the reason why it is named after the ant is because of the story of the ant and the whole army of ants that was faced by Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam in this beautiful surah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off the surah Taseen, these are letters that are separated. And this was in order to draw the attention of the eloquent Arabs, subhanAllah. Those who are absolutely eloquent, they did not understand the meaning of ta and seen separated. These are hurufun muqatta'ah, separated letters. When they heard this, they looked at this man who was absolutely eloquent and they were confused. They did not know what does he mean. And the message came immediately after that. تِلْكَ آيَاتُ الْقُرْآنِ وَكِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ Indeed, these are the verses of the Qur'an and a clear book, a book that is so clear, subhanAllah. Allah has kept its verses absolutely clear because obviously if they were not clear, then we would not be able to follow these verses. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these verses and this book, they will guide those who believe. There are people who read the Qur'an, they don't believe in it. And if they read it with a sincere, genuine heart, inshallah, they will get guidance from it. But for those who believe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa bushra lil mu'minin. Guidance and glad tidings. Guidance and glad tidings for the believers, for those who believe. And who are those who believe? الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ Those who fulfill their prayer, those who fulfill their salah, they establish their five daily prayers and they give their zakah and those who are convinced regarding the hereafter. Those who are looking forward to the hereafter. This means... That if we do not believe in Allah, if we are not looking forward to the hereafter, if we do not pray properly, if we do not establish our zakah correctly, we will not achieve the rahma and the huda from or the bushra from this particular Quran. When Allah says there is bushra lil mu'mineen, there is good news for those who believe, what we should realize and understand is. Allah describes the believers and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says quite clearly that these are the people who establish their prayer, they give zakah and they believe in the hereafter. Which means if you don't do those three, you won't be able to achieve the good news from this particular Quran and you won't be able to have the glad tidings. So it's important that we save ourselves from being discarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by believing in him and by trying to earn his mercy through establishing our prayer and through earning his pleasure by giving zakah, etc. Now, obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also speaks about those who are disbelievers, those who don't believe in the hereafter. What will happen to them? Allah says, those who do not believe in the hereafter, we have beautified their deeds for them in this world. They think they are doing good deeds, but Allah says they are blinded. They are blinded. They, are doing, they think they are doing good deeds, but in actual fact, if they don't have belief, then they have not prepared for the hereafter. What is the point of leading a life filled with goodness? 
where you have forgotten about the hereafter. So as soon as you die, you've never prepared for that eternal life that is about to come. We are taught to protect ourselves from the punishment of the hereafter by preparing for it from now. And this is why it requires a sacrifice coming for Salat al-Taraweeh today, for example, for establishing our fast, for example, throughout this month of Ramadan, reading the Quran, abstaining from haram. All this is an effort. It is through this effort that we save ourselves from the calamities and disasters of the hereafter, inshallah. Now, going to the story of Dawood and Sulaiman, alayhima as salatu was salam, may peace be upon both of them, they were very thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we would like the mercy of Allah, whenever he has bestowed upon us something, learn to show gratitude. You know, if there is a beggar, you give him something and he thanks you in such a way that he embarrasses you because what you gave him was so small, you will want to give him more. Because he is a beggar and he, you gave him something very minute. So this is why my beloved brothers and sisters, when we thank Allah for what he's given us, we should thank him so much for what he's bestowed upon us because for him, it is minute. He will give us much more. <laughs> Indeed, if you're going to be thankful to Allah, he's going to grant you increase. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 15, of this beautiful surah, Surah Al-Naml. And remember when we gave the Prophet Dawood and Sulaiman knowledge. We gave them knowledge. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ The two of them said something. What did they say? Imagine Allah says, we gave the two of them knowledge. Knowledge was bestowed upon them by Allah. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they said, Allahu Akbar. They are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has favored us over a lot of his worshippers from among the believers. They are thanking Allah. So you thank Allah when Allah has given you the opportunity to stand in salah. Alhamdulillah. Oh Allah, I thank you for giving me the chance and the opportunity, the ability, the strength to come to the masjid to fulfill salah for your sake. Oh Allah, I thank you for giving me the ability to sacrifice to give in your path you gave me and in turn i gave someone else oh allah i thank you for granting me and so many different types of gratitude we show gratitude not only by our tongues but together with that by obeying allah's instruction remember one of the hypocritical ways of showing gratitude is just to say thank you very much thank you very much and then you harm a person behind them that's not gratitude. I'd rather you don't say thank you, but you protect me from behind. That would be more gratitude than a person who pays that gratitude on your face and behind you, they are attacking you. Remember this. So my brothers and sisters, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to combine all of that, which means we say alhamdulillah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank you, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lak alhamdu wa lak shukru ya wajidu jalla jalaluk. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on top of that, when he has told us to do something, we will do it. When he told us to abstain from something, we will abstain from it. That is also gratitude to Allah. So if you just fulfill your salah, it's already gratitude to Allah. If you stay away from haram, it is gratitude to Allah. But when Allah has given you one thing, another thing, a third thing, a fourth thing, and you happen to transgress against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do you expect that to be gratitude? Imagine a person gives you 10,000 rands, for example, and every day you speak bad about him or he told you, please, can you do me a favor? Can you get me something small from the side there? And you refuse to get it once, twice, thrice. Something will happen to this man. He might think, you know what? This person, I, give, I do so much for him. He does nothing. I asked him to do something. He can't even do a small thing. Wallahi, when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does not need it from us. We need it more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember this. If we are to thank Allah, the benefit is for us. If we show gratitude to Allah, the benefit is for us. It is not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we abstain from the prohibitions, we are protecting ourselves because Allah says he sets rules and regulations in order for us to be able to 
show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He shows, in fact, he sets rules and regulations for us in order for us to save ourselves from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my beloved brothers and sisters, let's remember this. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is most merciful and he is teaching us that here are two slaves of mine. I made them prophets. I gave them power. I gave them wisdom. I gave them a lot of wealth. I gave them so much. And what are they saying? They are saying, Alhamdulillah. They are saying, all praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this is something that is amazing because these two prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were bestowed with so much, they could actually speak to the animals. Sulaiman alayhi salatu wa salam, Allah says, وَحُشِرَ لِسُلَيْمَانَ جُنُودُهُ مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ وَالطَّيْرِ فَهُمْ يُوزَعُونَ Allah had brought together the army of Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam from jinn kind, from mankind, and from the birds, from the animals, all these creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, we blessed Sulaiman alayhi salam with all of these in the form of an army that was under his control. So he had the control of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a great extent given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did he say? Was he arrogant? Imagine if you could uh, tell the wind, for example, to blow and it started blowing. What would you do? You would want to show your friends that, you know what, I can actually show you what I'm going to do. Wind, blow. And then the wind starts blowing. Whew. What happens? You just want to boast. With Sulaiman alayhi salam, it was not about boasting. He was so grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was so humble, so humble that even the ants meant so much to him. Imagine Sulaiman alayhi salam has been bestowed that which nobody was bestowed in that particular way, but he was so humble that he was bothered about the ants. We are not given even a fraction of what Sulaiman alayhi salam was, and we are not bothered about fellow human beings. That is something shocking. We are not even bothered about fellow human beings dying across the globe. We don't even want to reach out to those in our own neighborhood who are homeless perhaps, who don't have food and drink perhaps. We are not even cared. We don't even bother. Astaghfirullah. And who are we? We don't even have much ourselves. We are in need of the mercy of Allah. Look at the lesson. Sulaiman alayhi salam. What a powerful lesson. Whenever I read this, I always tell myself, this man was the most powerful of the time. And he was worried about the ants. Subhanallah. He was worried about the ants. That's why this whole surah is called a naml. Because the lesson is so great. That wallahi, it embarrasses us the way we operate in our own lives. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says quite clearly here. Hatta idha atau ala wadin naml. Subhanallah. When the army had got to the valley of the ants. Now, look at what happened in this valley. There were so many ants, they saw a huge army coming through. Instead of one running away and taking his friends, Allah shows us the unity in the ants. And the surah has a lot of unity in it. The surah actually shows us a lot, subhanallah, uh, in terms of being united and being together and the benefits of being together. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us here, one of these ants said, One of the ants called out to the rest of the ants saying, O oh, ants, enter your homes quickly. Enter your homes quickly so that you are not trampled over by Sulaiman and his army while they won't even notice that you were there. So the ants are so insignificant while I'm walking, while you are walking. Do you notice the ants? The answer is no. A lot of the times you don't notice them and we trample over them. We drive over them. This was Sulaiman alayhi salam. He heard the conversation. One ant telling, not just its family, but the rest of the ants. And you know what? Please get into your homes. I care for you. So now that I care for you, I want you to know 
that if you are not going to go into your homes, you might be trampled by Suleiman and his army without him noticing. But guess what? He noticed. So Allah says, out of gratitude, Suleiman alayhi salatu was salam marching along. Verse number 19 of Surah Al-Naml, which is the 27th Surah of the Quran. Allah says, he smiled. He smiled in laughter. He smiled in laughter at the statement of this ant because he heard it. And guess what he did? He stopped his whole army. He stopped the entire army. And subhanallah, he made room for the ants to get back into their homes. Subhanallah. What did he say at that juncture? Did he boast? Did he brag? Did he show? Did he say to people, hey, I'm a big man and so on? No. But instead, do you know what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this man said, Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'matak. Oh Allah, give me the ability to thank you for the favors you've bestowed upon me. He didn't say, oh Allah, I thank you. No. Oh Allah, give me the ability to be thankful to you because thankfulness is not just a statement, but it is a way of life. Thankfulness is a way of life. Gratitude is a way of life. That's what it is. Your life will show whether you are grateful to Allah or not. So remember this, my brothers and sisters. This is why Sulaiman alayhi salam did not say, Oh Allah, I thank you directly. But he said, Oh Allah, give me the ability to thank you for everything you have given me. Number one, you need to recognize what Allah gave you. What did he give you? A lot of us, we walk, we breathe. We don't realize the breath we have, the health we have, the eyes we have, the noses we have, the ears we have, the hands we have, the feet we have, the nails we have, the hair we have, the organs we have. All this gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only in you before your clothing and your money and your food. All of that is outside of you. But what is inside of you? Allah says, وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ Don't you look within yourself to see the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has bestowed you with so much. Show gratefulness. Be grateful. Gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your way of life. Here is Sulaiman alayhi salam. He says, Oh Allah, grant me the ability to be thankful to you. Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'matak. Not just me. Allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayy. That which you have favored upon me and upon both of my parents. Who was his father? Sulaiman was the son. Dawood was the dad. How do I remember that usually? The S is for the son and the D is for the dad. Simple way of remembering. Dawood was the dad. Sulaiman was the son. So Sulaiman alayhi salam is saying, Oh Allah, grant me the ability to thank you for the favors you bestowed upon me and upon my parents. That which you gave my parents. Subhanallah. And on top of that, he wants to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something even more. And oh Allah, give me the ability to do good deeds that will please you. Oh Allah, give me the ability to do good deeds that will please you, Ya Allah. Subhanallah. Oh Allah, give me the ability to do good deeds that you will be pleased with. Which means I want to please you, so make it easy for me to please you. Subhanallah. One is you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to thank to grant you the ability to thank him and two is you asking him to grant you the ability to now do good deeds that will be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is indeed the height of humility the height of humbleness this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of such a powerful gift in surah to naml why did Allah choose the ant to name the surah he could have named it surah sulaiman he could have named it Surah Dawood. These are prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, Allah says Surah to naml because the lesson for you is that the ant was so significant. Subhanallah, subhanallah. My brothers, my sisters, Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam. He makes this dua. He continues. He says, وَأَدْخِلْنِي بِرَحْمَتِكَ فِي عِبَادِكَ الصَّالِحِينَ Oh Allah, let me be granted entry, in, entry into the circle of the worshippers who are pious. Adkhilni bi rahmatik through your mercy. Grant me the, the entrance into pious worshippers, which means I must be known by you as one of the pious slaves of yours. Now, let's pause for a moment, my brothers and sisters. Today, 
If we are given so much power, money, wealth of a different nature, perhaps authority on land, and so much in terms of this worldly living, what would you expect a person who has all of that to do? Will he be concerned about the ants? Will he be concerned about the other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Will he be concerned? Will he be concerned about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored him with? Or will he be above everyone? Hi, it's even difficult to meet him, to talk to him. He won't even want to look in this direction or that. He's not interested in anything. Subhanallah. With Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam, he was humble. He says, Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help me, guide me, open my doors. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon him so much, my brothers and sisters. It's amazing how we learn lessons from this beautiful story of the ants. That the ants were bothered for one another. They cared for one another. They actually looked out for one another. Not like us. If we are in trouble, we walk away. We're not worried about what happens to the rest of us. With the ants, they said, no, let's all go. Have you ever watched the ants? Have you ever seen how the ants operate? If they were to find a piece of food somewhere, they will go back and inform their, the rest of their nation that I found food somewhere. And then they will all walk in an orderly fashion, no matter how far it is, to that particular place. Together they will circle it, they will help to carry it, and they will start moving it all together, united. Because united, they can achieve. I have seen ants, and I'm sure you have seen ants carry things that are bigger than them. And they're all moving with this thing. It's like, you know, when we move with the janazah, subhanallah, and you see how many people are walking together. Ours, a janazah brings us together. With them, the food and the goodness brings them together, subhanallah. This is the gift of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why, my brothers and sisters, when you have goodness, learn from the ants to share that goodness with everyone. How much are you going to eat on earth? How much do you want on earth? You have one kilo of food. You're not going to finish it. You're going to have only a few hundred grams. Share it with someone else. You don't know if you're going to live tomorrow. Subhanallah. With us, we become selfish. Let's learn from the story of the ants. To save ourselves from selfishness. To save ourselves from hatred on earth by sharing with people. When you share the love and the bond increases between people, this is how we will be able to indeed uh, earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, if we are to look at Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam's life thereafter, Allah gave him so much of power and control over the jinn kind, subhanallah. The jinn kind as well, where subhanallah, he asked the jinn to do something and listen to what happened. There was the entire throne of the queen of Sheba known as Balqis. And Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam tells the jinn that he wants that throne to be brought in his presence. So the one says, I can bring it before you stand up. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that was Ifrit. That was Ifrit. Ifrit was a powerful jinn. And if Ifrit says, Ana bihi qabla an min maqamik. I will bring it for you before you get up from your seat. But you know what? There was another one who had knowledge of the book. Another jinn who had knowledge of the book. He says, I will bring it for you, the entire throne. I'll lift it up and bring it for you right here before your eye can blink. So as he blinked, he saw it all there. Subhanallah. Again, Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam says, Hada min fadli rabbi. Look, look at this man. Look at how humble he was. Everything he was given, he always thanked Allah. He related it to Allah. So Allah gave him more and more and more because he related it to Allah. When we get something, we relate it to our brains, our minds, our jobs, our people, guys around us. That's the reason why we keep on failing. Rather, relate it to Allah. Allah gave this to me. Oh Allah, I thank you. Oh Allah, look at what you've done for me. Yes, that was the jinn kind. They had knowledge of the book and so on. But he says, Hadha min fadli rabbi. Do you know what? In order to test me, am I from among those who thank? who are thankful or am I from among those who are showing ingratitude so this is Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam he is saying himself that this that Allah has given me is a test what is the test to see am I thankful or do I show ingratitude my brothers and sisters we pause we pause in order to look at our lives once again 
everything you have is in order to test you whether you are going to thank Allah or you are going to show ingratitude. It's up to you. You pass the test or you fail the test. Remember this. Save yourselves from failing by showing gratitude to Allah, relating it to Allah. Learn from this man. What a great man. King Solomon. That's what he was known as. King Solomon. Al-Malik Sulaiman. Alayhi salatu was salam. He was a prophet and a king at the same time. A powerful man. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look at what he is saying. Oh Allah, I am thankful to you. This is a test from Allah. This is from the favor of Allah upon me. In order to test me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن شَكَرَ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ Whoever shows gratitude is indeed showing gratitude only for himself. Which means that will help you. You are grateful, it doesn't help Allah, it helps you. وَمَن كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ رَبِّي غَنِيٌّ كَرِيمٌ Verse number 40 of the surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And whoever is ungrateful, indeed, your Lord or my Lord is indeed independent. Ghaniyun, kareem, filled with honor. Sometimes we are ungrateful. Allah says, I'll still give you. But for a period of time, you are ungrateful, I'll give you. So many people show ingratitude to Allah. Allah gave them the wealth of this world. What will be in store for them in the Akhirah? I tell you, before we die, if we turn to Allah, then we can always build our palaces in the hereafter through Tawbah. But if we don't, it is us who stand to lose. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention of this beautiful story in this particular surah, Surah An-Naml, for us to learn that, you know what? No matter how much you have in terms of power, it should never ever make you feel that you are above everyone else. Because a day can come when everything can come crashing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us humbleness and humility. Then there is something very interesting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of. And that is this queen of Sheba, just before all of this had happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her the opportunity to communicate with Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam. So Sulaiman alayhi salam sent her a letter and told her to worship Allah alone and not to worship the, the, the son that they were worshiping. So she received this letter and she read it and she was so intelligent. She said something that we have a lesson to learn from today. When she read the letter, she called all her people, her ministers, and she had a meeting. She asked them, what should I do? I've received the letter. She read the letter. It was two lines. The letter was two lines. <laughs> he first said who the letter is from. This is from Sulaiman. He started off by saying, Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. And then he says, that they needed to submit and surrender themselves to him because he was the authority there. He, they knew that there is something amiss here. So the lady says to her people, Verse number 34 of the surah. She says, when kings enter into a territory, when kings enter into a land, they turn it upside down, they destroy it completely. They destroy it and they, those who were high become low and so on. They are not worried who you are. They come and there is destruction. Therefore, we will try and engage these people in dialogue. Subhanallah. Look at the, the sense she had. Today on the globe, every small thing, people want to fight and go to war. We don't realize, learn from Surah An-Naml, learn from this queen of Sheba, Balqis. What did she do? She said, when a king or when rulers want to come into our land, they'll trample over everything and destroy the infrastructure completely. The better thing for us to do is to engage them in dialogue, to make sure that we resolve the matter in a different way. And that is what happened. At the end, she ended up accepting the faith and she ended up, subhanallah, with Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all until we meet again inshallah and continue aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina muhammad subhanallahi bihamdihi subhanaka allahumma bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk